sharing with you one of the challenges I see after traveling to 75 countries to see our missionaries is that sometimes we forget how God has blessed us. There, you're going to see in some pictures I took, you're going to see how, how some people have to live. Some people could never enjoy a meal like we had tonight. And we're going to talk about that, but they live in the countries where they've never heard the name of Jesus. I want to ask you right there, my friend sitting all by himself, how long have you known Jesus? Your whole life. 47. I've known Jesus my whole life. But there are people in the world that never heard his name. Now we've got to send people to those people in darkness that never heard his name. Anybody know what they're called? Does anybody here know what they're called? When we send people, <clears throat> that's it, missionaries. We got to send missionaries. You know what missionaries do? They tell people about Jesus. Let me ask you, you think you're a missionary? Please go like this. Yeah. yeah. Bet your life. Now I want you all to know I'm not a pastor. I'm just a layperson, just like you. And I don't have one day of college. I'm a real dummy. But if God can use me, he can use all of us here. You think you could tell people about Jesus? You bet your life you can. So let's do something to get this thing straightened out to start, and then we're going to go to some countries where they've never heard the name of Jesus. I want every one of you to raise your right hand right now. By the power vested in me, I swear you in as missionaries for the rest of your life in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. You're all missionaries the rest of your life. Are you a little missionary? Yes, you are. Don't ever hesitate. You can tell people about Jesus. And we're all sworn in. And you know, we got to send missionaries to different parts of the world, and they dress differently. Now, Easton, you got to come up here and help me. Easton is our little boy from Africa. This is where the church is growing the fastest in the world. And you know, <clears throat> Easton, if they were going to church there, a little boy was going to church, I want you to know that this is what he would wear. Now, Easton, I want you to put this on, and then see, here's your arms, so you have to put this on, like that, that's it, and your hair, head through there, that's good, put your little arms out here, that's the stuff, there you go, you're doing great. Now, if you were a little boy over in Africa, you'd even have a cap that you have to wear, just like that, you know, that just fits you, now, they all want to see you. This is our little African boy. And I want you to know that came all the way from Ghana, West Africa, and that's the way that little boy would dress. Now, are you ready, honey? Come right up here. I want you to stand right here. This comes from Kenya, and that's in East Africa. Now, I want you to know that that's where the church is really, really growing. Growing in Kenya. Now, when they go to church and you're a young lady, this is what you would wear. They like bright colors. And I want you to know this is exactly what you would wear 
In Kenya, if you were going to church... Now, you have one arm out. That's exactly what you would wear to church. They always have one arm in, one arm out. And oh, how they like to wear beads. That's exactly what she would have for beads. There you are. Well, let's see. I got to have another. Come on, son. You come right on up here. Now, if you were a young man there, you got to stand right next to your wife here. Did you catch that? <laughs> Not yet. I want you to know if you were walking along in the jungle, you'd carry something like that. Now, that's made from the emboyo tree, and that's used as a hammer or a defensive weapon, and they carry that along. And in the other hand, you'd probably carry this. Right in the jungle. You got any idea what that is? You see people in the jungle and along the roads and in the villages. They all have one of these. And that's a pillow. You'd see them sleeping and they carry their pillow right along. I brought that right out of the jungle for you. And they still have a shield like that. Think of that. Can you hold on to part of that? See, can you hold on to there? That's the stuff. That's just the way they do it. They still have that, and that's made out of cowhide, and that's a shield. And they even carry something like that. Now, if you were a farmer, you'd have to have something special. I need another boy to help me out here. Okay, son. Come right on up here. Now, if you were a farmer and you were going to have to do some plowing, I want you to know this is the kind of plow that you'd have all day long like this. A lot different. Is your dad farm? Does that look like your dad's plow? Didn't think so. You stand right over there now. You ever mow lawn? You mow lawn. I want to show you a lawnmower. Here's your lawnmower. You all see that? And they sharpen that along this way and this way and this way. And when they mow lawn, here's how they mow lawn. Cut in both ways. You can mow lawn. Let's see. I see you sitting there. Come on, son. These people are all from Africa, and that's where the church is really growing. Well, we also have a missionary by the name of Dr. Steve Oliver that this country supports, or this congregation supports. And when he goes into China, a lot of the young people wear this hat. This is called a Chairman Mao Zedong hat that came all the way from China. That's what you'd have. Now... I want you to know that when you're in China, you believe in a person called Buddha. You ever heard of Buddhists? Gautama Buddha was a prophet. And they almost worship him, and they believe in ancestor worship. And they believe that they need to send things to their deceased relatives. Do you have a grandpa or grandma that's in heaven? Yes. Okay. Now, if you were a Buddhist, you'd believe grandpa and grandma are in heaven, but they don't have anything, so you got to send them something. And you know how you send grandpa or grandma something? 
You burn it in the Buddhist temple and in the magic and the smoke and fire that goes to grandpa and grandma. Grandpa and grandma said, oh, let's burn this. And you take this to the Buddhist temple and right up on the altar, right on the altar, you put this and you burn it and magically it goes to grandpa and grandma. They believe that. What is that? McDonald's Happy Meal. That came right from China. They believe that. That's how they believe. Look at that. And it's all made out of paper, and they believe that if they burn that, if they burn this, suddenly you can send to Grandpa and Grandma McDonald's Happy Meal. If it wasn't so sad, it'd be funny, wouldn't it? Now, do you understand why we have to send missionaries there? You get it? They believe this. And who do we have to tell them about, son? Who do we have to tell them about? Who are we going to tell them about? Huh? Yeah, about our Jesus. Now you come right up here with me. I want you to know that's a sad thing when they believe something like that. But you know, it's interesting. You're the guy from China. Now, you sit, stand right there. They also believe in evil spirits. Do you believe in evil spirits? No. Because no. you, who's our pal who's with us all the time? God. Yes, God's with us. And he said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Mm -hmm. And he sent his son. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus, our Jesus. That's right. Now, they believe in evil spirits, and they think they got to scare them away. Have you ever seen pictures from China where they have those long dragons and the men are underneath? You remember? I want you to know that they believe that those evil spirits, they believe that they can scare the evil spirits away with those dragons. I want you to know something. This is the very head of one of those dragons. And the men are out behind. And I want you to know that they believe that scares away the evil spirits. Now I want you to know, you just follow right along with Missionary Gary here. Just follow right along. I'll lead you down. Because I want these people to see that they're all sitting in the back here. They're real Lutherans fighting for the back pew. I want you to see this because this comes right from China. I saved you a trip to China so that you could see this. And I want you to know they believe in that. And oh, they're so happy to see those dragons come to scare away the evil spirit. Now, some of you will never see anything like that again. But I want to tell you something, partner. I really appreciate your help. God bless you. Now, these are people from around the world. And I want you to know that the very last words of our Lord Jesus before he ascended into heaven, he said these words. Now, pay attention. Everybody listening? His last words in Mark 16, 15, he started to ascend into heaven and he looked back at all of his followers and he said, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. That was the words of Jesus. And that's why we have to send these missionaries all over the world to people like this. And I want you to know how much I appreciate your kindness in helping. Let's give these young people a nice hand for their help tonight. You did real well. Now, just put your things right there. I'll help you, honey, with this. There you go. There you go. That's good. Thank you. And boy, Easton, you just did so well. Thank you for helping old missionary Gary. Now, tonight, we're going to see pictures of three different missionaries. One missionary is being helped by the folks over at Manila, 
And then we have missionary Dr. Steve Oliver, who's being helped by this congregation, and also Mark and Megan Manti, who are in Uganda. And in Uganda, in East Africa, this is a problem. Do you know what this is? This is a black magic face. Have you heard of black magic? Do you know who's in charge of black magic? The devil. The devil. Your daddy is so smart. He got that right like that. That's right. The devil. And we have to send missionaries to bring them out of this darkness. And that's why it is so, so, so important. I want you to know that I see, as I travel in this world, people who say, oh, we got to send grandpa and grandma a pizza. We got to burn that. Or we got to send grandpa a suit and tie. These are things that remind us of how important it is to send missionaries. Now, let's take a look at some of these missionaries and see some real pictures. My executive assistant will bring down the lights now because I want it dark so you all can see very carefully some of these missionaries and the countries in which they live. You know, because of congregations like the congregation at Manila and here in Manning, they send checks to Mission Central where I operate and where our offices are and we give it to the missionaries so they can go into lands of darkness. Now, this is the first missionary we're going to talk about. Now, these people I've known for 27 years. I knew Dr. Oliver before he was married. He went over to Taiwan, which is over by China, just off the China coast. He went over there as a single man, and look what God gave him over there. Can you see what God gave him? A wonderful wife. And those are his children. That's Dr. Oliver and his children. You know where that picture is taken? In my office. Can you see my boss in the background there? That's who I work for. I work direct. And I want you to know that it was now about eight years ago that that little boy in the front row with the blue glasses, he was born. And Dr. Oliver called old missionary Gary, and he said, Gary, we have a new little boy in our family, and we wanted you to be the first to know. His name is Gary. I said, you dirty rat. This is going to cost me 80 acres and a college education. I can see it all now. That little boy has grown up, and that's the most wonderful family. When they come back to the United States, they always come to Mission Central. And he's over in Taiwan. He goes into mainland China. Take a look at that picture right there. Our missionary was going to go to that gathering place in mainland China, and he was expecting to meet with six men. He said, when I got there, I opened the door, and he said, I started to cry. Here's a picture of the six men. 300 people waiting for that missionary to tell him about who. Yes, our God, our Jesus. Because you know Jesus died for those people. And we have to tell them about Jesus. See those people all lined up? They're not lined up for a football game. They're lined up to get into church. That's in mainland China. At that church, they worship 10,000 people on Sunday morning. Whoa. I want you to know this is their Christmas program. They had four Christmas programs. And our missionaries were there. 
They had 15,000 people on, sun, on Christmas Eve. The news media doesn't carry stories like that. There's your missionary, Dr. Oliver, right there. And those are his students. He's training pastors and evangelists to go into mainland China. There's some more of his students. Dr. Oliver is a wonderful, wonderful Christian man. Look, there he's teaching again. Teaching them. Sunday school teachers and Bible class teachers. And those ladies will go out. And what do you think those ladies will do? What do you think those ladies will be doing? Oh, you are so right, honey. That's exactly right. They're going out and tell everyone about Jesus, our Savior. There's uh, Dr. Oliver, your missionary, with two of his co-workers. And he's teaching at a seminary there in Taiwan. There he is with the full, all of those are the teachers in that Luther Seminary in Taiwan. Now, this is a very good picture. There's your missionary, Dr. Oliver, and that's his friend, Pastor Carl Hansen from Des Moines, Iowa. He's teaching over there, and he's now in Seoul, Korea. And that man right there is a wonderful pastor. His name is Pastor Michael Wu, and he's a Chinese man that goes into mainland China to plant churches. What's that? The dragon, that's right. And we got to see the head of one of those tonight, didn't we? Yeah. And see, that's used, remember what that's used for, to scare away? Yes, the evil spirits. You're right, son. You can be proud of your son. He's paying attention. I want to share with you, this is Buddha. Remember I told you about Buddha? That's who they worship. That's Buddha. They're called Buddhists. They don't know about Jesus. That's why we got to send missionaries. Now, this is the largest statue of Buddha in the world. It's carved out of a mountain there. And look at the little people down here. They come from all over to worship this Buddha and pray to him. Do you think Buddha can hear them? No, he can't. Look at the size. See that? Look at all those people way up there, all the way walking around, a giant carved out of a mountain. And they come and they worship Buddha. Look at those are Buddhist priests. They're kneeling down praying to Buddha. Now, especially the moms and dads that are here. The church is growing in mainland China. They're starting four new Christian congregations a day, and yet they're persecuted. I just got this picture from mainland China. I want you to look carefully at that picture. You see that great big building? What is that? It's a church. You're right, son. It's a church. And look at what this is here. A great big excavator right next to it. You know what that excavator is going to do? What do you think? Going to tear that church down. They're persecuted. The government came in, the communist government. They were worshiping 3,000 people at that church. And the government came in and said, we need that ground right there. We're tearing down that, that church. Those were all from the area of China. Do you know that this young man right there, Mark Mantai and his wife Megan, are in right now, tonight, in Uganda, in East Africa. Do you know where Mark grew up? Charter Oak, Iowa. And they're over in Uganda. In Uganda, and they're teaching. Now, I bet you'll never guess where that picture's taken. You're right, you're right. That's exactly right. They came there to Mission Central. They said, Missionary Gary, can you help us with some support? I said, no, I can't. But maybe Zion Lutheran Church down there, 
down there at Manning. Maybe they could help. That's one of the missionaries that you support here in Manning, Iowa, out of this church. Halfway around the world, you see Mark and Megan Mentai. Woo! Jerry, I have a question. Yes. Back on the stuff in Asia and China. Yeah. You were talking about how they're educating people to go out and tell the world. And yes. Yes. They don't want that. That's such a good question. They risk their lives for Jesus. I mean, if, if, if the powers that be say, we don't support what you're doing, I mean, they'll go to some work camp or be executed. I mean, what they'll go to prison and may be executed. Isn't that something? You were supposed to ask that question. See, we can go to church. We have free freedom here. Yet. Yet, we have freedom. But in mainland China, where the church is growing, there's persecution. Maybe that's what we're going to have to have here. So people wake up. I want to tell you something. That's a very, very good question because these people that tell others about Jesus are risking their lives. And the growth is all in the underground church. See, they, they meet secretly, underground. In hidden places. Now, in Africa, that's where the church is exploding. If you said, Missionary Gary, where is the church really growing? I want you to listen carefully. Now, I don't want anybody not paying attention. Because I want you to go home and tell those that are not here where the church is really growing. The Lutheran church, right next to Uganda, where your missionary here is, Mark Manti, that's a neighboring country. They're averaging baptizing a thousand people a day. You know why? Because the people are excited about Jesus. They're excited about Jesus. Wherever they go, it isn't the pastors, it's the people. And they go to one another and say, Do you know about Jesus? He's our Savior. Averaging a thousand people a day being baptized. You know how many members in the Lutheran Church of Ethiopia? Listen now, so you can share this. Ten million Lutheran Christians in Ethiopia. That's five times the membership of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. In one country in East Africa, the Holy Spirit is calling people there. And they're excited about finding a God who loved them. God loved us so much he gave his only son to die for you and me. That's how much he loved us. And see, in Africa, they have angry gods. When something bad happens, you know what? They think the gods are mad at me. And then they find a God who loves them. I want to share with you, that's a baptism class. That'd be like a confirmation class. How do you like that? We have a seminary right in that area of Uganda that has 100 students in it. All of those students are studying to be a pastor or evangelist to start new churches. Girls, what's going on here? Baptizing. Look at that, all the little children that are coming to be baptized. Look at that. Oh, they're so excited because they're being baptized. And look at it, it's the older people too. Look at that man, he's coming to be baptized. Look at all those little kids lining up, getting ready to be baptized. They want to know about Jesus. That's a baptism class. All of those people that you see right under that tree. Now, they don't have buildings like you've got here. When they worship, they worship under tree. I've saw thousands of people sitting under trees. Look at those. Those are all people lined up waiting to be baptized. Now, we take our homes for granted here. But I want you to look carefully right there. You know what those are? Those are refugees that have fled from another part of the country. And now, they come together and try to get along. They have no homes. 
Those are all refugees. And we have our missionaries going to these refugee camps. Now, for you young people, I want you to pay close attention. Are you all paying attention? Okay, I want you to look right at that picture. See that home up there? Does that look like your home? How would you like to live in a home like that? I want to share with you that's really, really important you understand how God has blessed you to have a mom and dad and a place to stay like you have. Look at those little children there. What do you suppose he's carrying on top of his head? Water. That's exactly right. That's water. Now, this is one of my favorite pictures. Look at that mom. How many children does she have? Four children. One, two, three, four. You see her house? That's all she has. And she has those four little children to raise. You suppose we ought to send a missionary to tell them about Jesus? You betcha. I really love that picture because we're so blessed in this country. And all that lady has is that house and her machete there. That's her total, total. Yes. Yes, the lawnmower is there. You're right. That's what she has, and that's where that family has to live. And we send a missionary to that family. Now, Missionary Gary traveled to this part of East Africa, right in the area where Mark and Megan Manti are working. And I walked along this road and looked up to that mountain, and they said there are 80,000 Pokot people living up in those mountains, and none of them know about Jesus. Wow. And I want you to know, look at that little boy. Now, if you were a boy in Africa, that's one of the jobs you would have. See that little boy? What are they herding there? Anybody know what that is? What are they herding ahead of them there? Goats is exactly right. You're right, honey. Those are goats. And all day long, those boys have to herd these goats. Now, your friend missionary Gary stayed in a house just like this. I had to stay overnight, and I went inside that house there, and there was a cot, and I was, had to sleep on that cot, and all over that cot was a netting. Do you know what that kind of netting was for? Hmm? Mosquitoes. Because one mosquito could give you malaria. And I want you to know when I got in there, they don't have electricity. I had a kerosene lantern and I set that lantern down. It showed up into the straw ceiling and there was a great big lizard about this long. Right in that roof. Right in the ceiling. And you know what I said? Lord, keep that, keep, that, keep that lizard up there all night, would you? Yeah, that's the kind of thing. That's a very common village there. And I don't want you to forget that. And you think about that, the type of homes that we have. And then we'll say, thank you, Lord, for letting us be in this country. We have so much, and they have so little. Now, I went into this village for the very first time myself, and I met with these children. They'd never seen a balloon before. I had a balloon with me. And I blew up that balloon. And look at that. Look at that. They'd never seen a balloon before. But now pay attention. I don't want anybody dozing off or not paying attention. Look at the little boy. Those children never heard about Jesus. And look at this little boy right here. Can you see that? You know what that is? That's his navel. And when he was born, it wasn't clean, and he got infection in there, and he'll carry that all his life. 
These little boys now know about Jesus because we have Sunday school in that village. You know why? Because we send a missionary. I think you could be a missionary someday. I think you could do. You think about that. Look at that little boy. That's a little boy about like your age, and look at their clothing. Now, this lady's working in a kitchen. They're going to have church service, and this is their church's ki kitchen. They're going to have something to eat like we had tonight. Take a look. You know what those are? Beans. Look at how many of them they're going to have. They have a lot of people. And I want to share with you, it's exciting to see that. Can you see their nice pews like you're sitting in? No. The ladies sit down on the ground. Oh, look at those ladies have necklaces just like our little gal had up here. They want to hear about Jesus. Uh-oh, look at here. See, that little boy, he didn't even have clothes on. That's their pews right there. And they were singing. And there's their choir. And look at there. See, that's their, their pews. That's what they sat on. I took these pictures. And I want you to know that those ladies brought their children and they were all interested in hearing about the Lord Jesus. Now, if you've been sleeping, wake up, because I want to show you this picture. I took this picture, and I cried. I cried when I took this picture. Sitting under these trees were the Pocot people in northern Kenya, and I want you to know there was a thousand people there. Do you know how long their worship service was? Six hours. They can't get enough. I saw an older lady stand up after six hours being there, and she stood up like this, and she looked at all the people and got real quiet. You know what that lady said? Is this all we get? Six hours. They are hungry for Jesus. This man right here in the right-hand side was speaking to those people about Jesus for the very first time. He was speaking in Swahili, their language. <clears throat> and they were all sitting in the grass. And he was teaching a lesson, a lesson that was like a little kindergarten lesson. Just like a little kindergarten child would learn about Jesus on that level because they never heard his name before. And after he got done speaking, that evangelist had them all stand up. And then I took this picture. And I cried. Because that evangelist said to all of those people there under the trees, he said, now I ask you, how many of you will take Jesus home with you in your heart? If you will, raise your hand. I saw a thousand people raise their hand. And see the lady in the yellow? She's crying. I want you to know I cried because these people are baby Christians. For the first time, they heard about a God who loved them. I'll never forget taking that picture because those people are going to be in heaven with you and me, son. They're going to be there. And why? Because we send a missionary. That's how important this work is. I want you to know that when you really analyze the people in Manila and their pastor knows this man. Pastor, you know that man, don't you? And you tell everyone what he was in your life. Right, so you come to know Pastor Gary Shusky, and you've helped that man. And you know where that man is? He's in Frankfurt, Germany. 
Now, for the adults here, how many of you have German background? Raise your hand. If you've got some German background, raise your hand. I want to know. Okay. My grandpa came from Germany, right from an area where Pastor Schuske is. My grandpa came to over by Ute, Iowa, and he and six other men helped to start the church over there at Ute. It was important for them to have a church started. My little grandpa had no education, but he knew Jesus. And I want to tell you something. All of you have German heritage and background? How many of you know what's going on in Germany? Right where this missionary is in Frankfurt, Germany. Do you know that there are millions of Muslims coming into Germany? You need to know these things. They're welcoming by the millions. In Germany today, which is where, you know, our roots are. That was the starting of Lutheranism there with Martin Luther. Oh, everybody in Germany is Lutheran. Wrong. In Germany today, there are over 3,000 mosques and over 5 million Muslim people. You know what? The German government said, if this doesn't change, Germany is going to be, by 2050, a Muslim state. These things are going on, and the average person doesn't have a clue. There's darkness. Now, I want to share with all of you here, that's why we send Pastor Gary Shusky. He's wonderful. Did I say something wrong? Okay, thank you. Otherwise, I'd gone home and say I offended you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I want to share with you, that's why Gary Shusky is there. And I want to share with you as we conclude, he is teaching right there and has the church right there in Frankfurt. This is Germany, Poland, Czech Republic, Austria, Frankfurt on the Main. That's where Gary Schuske is. And these are the, the buildings in Germany, in Frankfurt. That's where he's working. Notice this in Germany. It's very well kept, beautiful. And they have giant churches. Look at the size of that church in Germany. Now I'm going to show you that church inside on Sunday morning. In Germany today... Less than, less than 2% of the people are in church on Sunday morning. Less than 2%. Germany is being overrun. Look at that. That's on a Sunday morning. Now that's the church where Pastor Gary Shusky is working. And that's the congregation that Pastor Gary Shusky has. I wanted you to see that, Pastor Johnson. So you know. And there you see your friend, Pastor Gary Shusky. What's he doing there, son? He's baptizing. That's exactly right. And they're finding out about Jesus. I have used up my time. Pastor, you said I could have the full time. We're on target for time, and I can't thank you enough. So I hope as you leave here, you've learned something. And that little boy is going to be a preacher someday. I think that's okay. That's okay. Because he can praise the Lord in a very special way. And I want you to know, folks, it's time to wake up. If just one of you tonight that's here wakes up and realizes you're a missionary, then my trip here is all worthwhile. Because you can tell people about Jesus. The last thing I'm going to say is I was involved in a study all the way across the United States. And we went to people who were not Christian, who didn't know about Jesus. And we asked all those people, how many of you have ever been invited to church? And out of those 10 people, 70% of the people who've never been to church have never been invited. When's the last time you invited somebody to come to church? 
I'm so grateful you're here tonight. I'm very happy you're here because you experienced it. You found somebody that cared for you and loved you. And you found out how important this work was. And that's why you're here with your family. This man became a Christian because somebody loved him. That's what makes it happen. When's the last time you asked someone to come to church with you? When you go to school, young people, you got people in your class that don't know about Jesus. One of the greatest stories I've ever heard is a little girl like you with her friend. She had a Muslim friend, and she said to her little friend, I want you to be in heaven with me. I want you to know about Jesus. And because of that little girl in school, I got pictures of that little Muslim girl being baptized. She found out about Jesus. You know why? Because her friend loved her. That's how important it is. And the older I get, simpler this gets. It's not complicated. I asked a little four-year-old girl down in my chapel. She came to visit. And that little four-year-old girl sat right there, and I said, Honey, there's the statue of Jesus. He's got those marks in his hands and feet. I said, Who did he do that for? And that little four-year-old girl made me cry. She looked up at me, and she said, He did that for me. He knows my name. Do you know Jesus died on the cross for you? And he's your Jesus. The problem we got is people today don't take Jesus seriously. They don't take him personally. Jesus died for me. He knows my name. And he's standing right here. That's why we got to wake up in this country. I see people in this country turning their back on Jesus. And it's time we wake up. And the only way we're going to wake up is through you young people. Because remember... We're going to be in heaven, aren't we, Pastor? And you're going to be left. God bless you, and I want you all to know this, how much old missionary Gary loves you. We don't say that enough. And I know one thing. I'm not going to say goodbye to you tonight. Some of you I'll never see again here on earth. But I will see you later when we get to our real home. Where's our real home? In heaven. I'll see you there. Let's pray. Oh, good and gracious God, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for being with these young people. Lord, they're all sworn in as missionaries for the rest of their lives. They'll tell people about Jesus and what he did for them. And that Jesus did this for them and he knows their name. Lord, bless these young people especially tonight that they might always remember our time together. And all this we ask in the name of Jesus who loves us and who taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight, and God bless you. And you know what? I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Gary, we love having you here, and I know that if anyone wants to stay around and visit with you, you'd be happy to do that. Absolutely, and I'd like to invite you to come and see the Creation Theater, the Barn Museum. It'd be the greatest trip. How many of you have been to Mission Central? Raise your hand. Whoa. We got to get more. We got to get these people loaded up. That's just an easy 55 minutes away. Over in Mapleton. Absolutely. Mapleton, Iowa, and you get to see the story of creation. And if you thought these things were interesting, I got the best stuff left. Very I got the best stuff left. Yeah, get Excellent. these people round up and bring them. We'll do that. We can, can come over. We'll do that. Have you been there? Oh, you got to come. You got to come and see. 
Yeah, we have 30 animals from the jungle in Africa in a lifelike setting. I had a tour group there today, and I want to tell you something, folks. When they left, they were different than when they came. Excellent. So if you want to stay and visit with Gary, he's happy to visit. Thank you for your time this evening, and uh, we'll see you hopefully on Sunday. You come over. Have you been over? I, I've been over, but it's been quite a long time. Yeah, see, we got our new creation theater.